Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. This is a life well spent. My name is Kelly and on this channel, I document my financial journey. So we go over things like what my goals are, my budget, um, you know, tracking my goals, my net worth, all that kind of stuff. So this um, particular video is going to be talking about my budget for the month of July. It is late coming out because I forgot that July was a three pay month. So I had based my budget on my normal income and uh, oops. <laughs> so I, I sort of thought about it after the fact. I finalized it and then I was like, cool. And come July 1st, I realized, wait a minute, this is a three pay month. Oopsie. I mean, that's a good problem to have. But anyway, without further ado, we will get into the budget. So this is the budget template that I use. I created it myself. It's a little wonky, I think, for some people, but it works for me. Um, I like it so far. Still tweaking some things here and there, but here, that's what it is. So my income this month, I am expecting $4,476.90 from my job. I will actually get a little bit more than that because our the way that our three pay months work, um, that last paycheck doesn't have the same, like our HSA stuff doesn't get taken out of that last pay. Um, if we made certain, de certain deductions, like there's only, they do it kind of by a certain amount in a month. They don't do it like, I'm not really sure why, but they don't. So that means that our... Um, that third pay is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little bit more, but I can't calculate exactly how much more that's going to be right now because I don't know what my tax rate multiplier is going to be um, because the HSA stuff is, is um, well, it is tax free. So it's, um, it'll reduce my taxable income. So to not have that going out to my HSA, it means I have more taxable income. So the tax the amount of money that I would get would be different. I can't just take off, like, I can't just add how much I would normally send out in my HSA because it won't work out that way. So I just leave it like this. And then whatever the third thing is, the third pay is, I put it in and I'll see how much I'm over by. That's that. $291 um, comes to me from my mom. That's to pay for a couple of different things. Um, one of those being my student loans. We had a deal a long time ago when I went to school that my parents had paid for my education. They wanted me to take out loans, so they send me $200 to make the payment. Um, I'm actually working on gathering up some money. Um, that's my, one of my main goals right now is to, one of my main money goals right now is to um, pile up enough cash to pay off my student loans in one lump sum if Congress does not get their stuff together and do any kind of loan cancellation. So, um, but they're currently the ones, my parents are currently the ones making the payments. Um, also included in that is $50 that I'm sending into a brokerage account for my niece. And um, the uh, her my mother's portion of the cell phone and TV bill. So is what it is. Um, for a total income of $4,767.90. So giving, um, I actually do $100 a month in giving, but I put... Um, I put some of it over into a uh, a sinking fund so that I can pay out for like different giving opportunities and things like that. But I do $10 directly to, um, I think this one is to Planned Parenthood. And then I do a monthly contribution to Fair Fight out of my sinking funds. And it's just, I'm an idiot for how I set it up basically. It's just, I need to change it, but I kind of was like, I like auto drafted from PayPal and I was like, oh, well, that seems like a good idea without realizing that it doesn't pull then from my sinking fund. It pulls from my checking account. So I just, I keep them separate right now until I make that change. Mortgage, $676.03. My electric bill this month is $36.57. Natural gas, $26.12, which is kind of about what it gets to be because in the summertime, I don't really use my stove a lot. I make myself some tea in the morning. And that's about it. Um, I, it's too hot to cook. <laughs> And I don't really have air conditioning. I have like a window unit. Um, so I, I really try not to cook beyond like noonish because my the sun just sets on my kitchen and it roasts. My neighbors used to have this gorgeous tall tree that kept my high kitchen in the shade, but they had to tear it down. They, I mean, it was dying. It really needed to come down, but I was very sad because there's so much shade on my house that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, sewer, $58. That's a flat rate. Water, 2007. That may change. I haven't actually gotten the water bill, but um, that's what it was last month. And so I'm just going to kind of keep it at that. Uh, my internet, 125. That actually includes an internet and TV bundle. And honestly, we really only have the TV because of some things that my dad wants to be able to watch. 
Otherwise, we would both get rid of it. Or if we could get what he likes to watch through some of the other subscription services that we have. But um, those of you who are new to the channel don't know this. Those of you who've been around may know this. Um, I know I've talked about it, but you may not have seen it in a video. My father um, was in an accident and was paralyzed. And so um, it, it, I know that it's stupid to pay for more internet and more TV than you need, but um, you know, it, we need it to give us access to the things that he wants to be able to watch. And I mean, that's a small price to pay for, you know, the poor man gets very little, doesn't get much of anything that he would want or like in life. So we do this for him. It is what it is. Um, cell phone, $60. I had to up that because I definitely went over my data package. Um, I, I've caught out in, um, June way more than I expected to way more than I ever have not ever have but ever have probably since I had this plan um and I'm happy for that but I wasn't expecting to kind of go over my data and I did so I may need to look at adjusting that in the future but between you know when we first switched over to this plan we're paying by the gig and we pay for one gig of data it's twelve dollars um through uh, uh Xfinity Mobile um, I loved it. And my mom and I share that one gig of data because when it happened, um, it was shortly after my dad's accident. So we were literally going from work where we could be on Wi-Fi to the hospital where we could be on Wi-Fi to home where we were on our Wi-Fi. So like we really didn't have a need for data because we were never in a place that we actually had to access it. So it's worked really well for so long. Um, but I think now, especially, you know, after COVID things are starting to open up a little bit. Um, I might actually be out and about a little bit more and be able to use more data. So I might look at changing what that plan is going to look like, but that's where we're at right now. Grocery is $200. My life insurance is $7 and 50 cents. Gas, um, is a hundred dollars this month. Um, we'll see how I do there. I may make a kind of a mid month adjustment. I'd really like to take a trip. I'd love to go to Maine. Um, but I, I'm not quite sure yet. And, um, you know, if I need to add more to that, I will. Um, there's a hundred dollars for the brokerage account for my niece putting, um, or setting a hundred dollars aside in my budget for anything house and garden related. I don't really expect to buy any more plants except basil. I really do love basil. Um, and I like to make, uh, make a bunch of pesto to freeze. Um, so I will probably be buying a couple more plants of basil. And then I usually like, I buy a couple, um, and then I trim them, you know, so that you, you, you trim them so they kind of bulk out and like they bush up and they get really, really like thick, full of basil. Um, and then I'll take some of the smaller or one of the, some of the better, like more established ones. And I will propagate new basil from them because it's very easy to do. But, um, that way I have like tons and tons of basil and I can make a big batch of pesto. So that's probably going to be the only thing that I buy. And I, I probably can honestly adjust that to like $50, but I feel like if I do that, then I'm going to end up needing something for the house and I'm going to be mad at myself for that. So restaurant, I bumped up to a hundred dollars. There's the opportunity to go out a little bit more and I'm taking it while I can, because once school year starts again, that's probably going to be, things are probably going to get dicey again with that Delta variant. Unfortunately, personal $450. Um, some of that is going to be my, um, trip to Maine. If I, get to take it or anywhere that I go really. Um, miscellaneous, I up to $200, partly because I have, um, my identity theft protection, uh, renewal. It was $75 when I first bought it. Um, I'm not sure if it's gone up or not at all. So I kind of looking at like maybe a hundred dollars there and then a hundred dollars of miscellaneous things always come up. So you always want to have miscellaneous in your budget. My student loan payment is $200. And then down here, we have all the money that I'm allocating to my different sinking funds. So I put a car repair fund. Oh, by the way, I have not adjusted these properly yet. So don't, these are not at all accurate. <laughs> Some may be, others will not be because there's been money that's come out that I haven't, um, I haven't closed out yet. So don't pay attention to those numbers. <laughs> they don't, they're not necessarily accurate. So car repair, I put $50 into a car repair fund so that when I need something new, um, I can spend that. And in a couple of days, I'm going to get paid to get my car detailed. And that money's going to come out of the car repair fund, I believe, um, because I have it in there and I think I would rather, and it's, it's going to be pricey, but it's going to be, I mean, it, my car needs the level of detailing and cleaning that I don't have the time or energy to do. So I'm paying for somebody to do it. That's what it is. Like I'm, 
they're going to be like shampooing seats. I don't, I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have the equipment for that. So I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to pay someone. Um, my house fund, uh, last month I started, see, I haven't even like closed it out, but last month I started a, um, fund for my house. I'm going to put a hundred dollars of a month into a fund to, um, work on any kind of repairs in my house itself. So, um, I, you know, just in case something comes up, you know, I know like come the fall, I have my furnace looked at, I have it, they do a, a service on it clean it out, make sure everything is okay and everything's running the way it should run, replace anything that needs to be replaced, anything like that, which my furnace is from like the 80s, I think 87. So she's pretty old. She's plugging along. She's probably going to die soon. However, <laughs> the uh, when I call those guys to come in, that's where I will pull that money from. Um, if I need to come in and, and get like pest removal or spray for bugs or something like that, that'll all come out of that. Um, Nittany Lion Club, that's a, a donation that I make. Um, I make it once a year. So all of it goes just kind of in a fund. Um, and every January I make it. Garbage, I pay that once a year. So I put $15 a month into a fund for that. Um, I pay it once a year because I get a discount by doing it <laughs> that way. Um, giving fund, so the rest of the $100 um, minus the 10 and minus the 16 goes into a giving fund. Now there's 10 of 10 other $10 that comes out of there always automatically to, um, I believe that one is fair fight. And then the rest are, is just there for, um, you know, the opportunity to give if someone, um, you know, needs something, I, I have it there and I can, um, look and see how much I have and then determine how much I can give based on that. And I kind of like that. I like, being able to just give money and not even think anything of it instead of having to think like, hmm, how can I rearrange my budget to make sure that I do that? So I just prefer to have it set aside and ready to go. Um, my car insurance, I set aside $59 a month. I have more than enough in there now. I sincerely doubt it's probably like $100 more than I need. <laughs> um, but I will get the bill here actually this month um, and it's set to renew in August. So we'll see what that is. Um, I may actually shop around a little bit um, I did shop around on my homeowner's insurance and I think I'm going to do a video on that um, because that was kind of an interesting process and something I honestly have never done before. So, and I'm, the process itself isn't actually complete, so I'm going to wait until it is done to talk about it, but that was something else. Um, and so with that can come a change to my car insurance because I can bundle, you know, and save money that way and all that kind of stuff. So is what it is gift fund um i started a gift fund last month i used to have one um in my cash envelopes and then i stopped um but i thought you know i really actually like to have that money set aside so that like if it's someone's birthday if i need to buy a card if i need to buy um you know a, a colleague is is having you know a, a baby shower or something like that that i actually can can put some of that money aside um yeah and then um oh you know what I just remembered something at the very end of the month, I am going to a quilt shop to get some fabric for, to finish some quilts that I've had. So I think I need to make an, I think I need to make an adjustment here. I think I think I'm going to change my miscellaneous to 600 and we'll include the trip in there. And the personal will include my fabric. So that means, look at that, I'm over by $400. And the easiest way to do this is to do this. So 154461, that's what we'll do. I totally forgot we made plans to do that. There's this fabulous place. Um, and I have a couple quilts that I've been trying to finish that are gifts for friends. That's talking about the gift fund is what reminded me. Um, but the quilt shops that are around me, the fabric shops around me, I just really haven't liked the fabric. Um, and so I'm going to head down to this place. That's kind of a big place. Um, that's has exactly what I've, I've, I've hmm. I went there to do something else and like drove past this fabric shop and stopped in. Had I known that it was there when I was going to do the other thing, I would have taken the quilts with me. So I would have made sure I got the right fabric, but I haven't. And this is the first chance, um, at the end of the month that I have going to, I'm going to have to go back. So I need to make sure I budget for that. And I'll put that in the notes for myself. Um, the rest then goes to my student loan fund. So that should be about $1,544 and 61 cents. 
Thanks so much, guys.